Hey, Michael with X Force PC. We want to talk a little bit about benchmarking. And in X Plane 10, there was a built in benchmarking tool that you may or may not have known about because it was a command line thing you had to do. But that hasn't made its way back to version 11, so I wanted to do a little bit of benchmark testing for myself. So when my customers ask me, well, should I go for this graphics card or this processor or whatever, I can give them an idea of what their return on that investment is. Now the benchmarking I did, I did not do on a just a single 1080p display because that's pretty pedestrian. That's kind of the lowest end you're going to find that most people are running X-Plane on is a single 1080p display. A lot of people are running them on three 1080p's or they're running them maybe even on a 4K display. So we went kind of middle of the road. I ran them on a 27 inch, which the size really doesn't matter, but the resolution is what, what matters. And, it, and the resolution was 2560 by 1440. So I believe if you do the math on that, that's double the number of pixels that a 1080p display has. So somewhere in between a single 1080p and three 1080p's is where this um, you know, number of pixels falls. And we did two sets of benchmarks, one with rendering options or graphics options that I consider to be high and one that I consider to be extreme. So let's go ahead and put up on the screen now the high graphical settings. So when you look at the benchmark results for the high graphics settings, these are the graphics settings that I used um, when I ran the test. Now, I picked a, a different set of graphical settings to run what I call the extreme settings on. So I'm going to flash those up on the screen now. The, this is the extreme settings. Now, here we cranked up the anti-aliasing and the reflections and things like that. So these are tasks that normally get offloaded to the graphics card all this eye candy type stuff. So th those are the, what you see now are the extreme graphics settings. Now let's look at some of the benchmark results. So I'm going to put up now the high graphics settings results. And so what you're going to see here for high is you're going to see that the video card doesn't matter. It's all about the processor. So when we used a faster processor, we got faster or better frames per second. And that's the number you're seeing here, by the way, is frames per second. And what this tells us is if you're going to run your graphic options at something similar to what I had set for high, the video card doesn't really matter all that much as long as you get a decent graphics card. So if you're spending all that money to buy a GTX 1080, and you're going to run it, your graphic options somewhere around what I had for high, you're kind of wasting your money. So, uh, and the only way you really get better frames per second with high, what I call high, is with a faster processor. And those processors were the i5-7500, which runs, I believe, at 3.4 gigahertz. The i5-7600K, which, which I have overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. And the i7-7700K, which I've overclocked to 4.6. And so again, you'll see a variance there based on the clock speed of the processor. But the graphics card really didn't play a part in getting more frames per second. Now let's go over and let's now look at the benchmark results with the extreme graphics settings. This is where I really turned up the reflections and the anti-aliasing and the texture resolution and all types of things that you would think would put a bigger load on the pro on the excuse me the graphics card. And that is indeed what we see here. We do now see a variance based on what graphics card we use. So um, you'll see here that when we used a faster graphics card, we got more frames per second. And so again, what this tells us is if, if you plan to turn up all these settings, these reflections and the anti-aliasing and all that, then you will benefit from having a better graphics card. 
but um, you know if you're not going to turn these settings way up then you're kind of wasting your money on a GTX 1080. Now these are uh, results from X-Plane 11 Public Beta 8. I know Public Beta 9 just came out and I also do realize this is beta and a lot of these things could change. Uh, with, what you see with most um, I, I don't I hate to use the term game because X-Plane is really not a game, but what you see with most games is you put a faster graphics card in, you get more frames per second. But as you see with X-Plane, you really kind of need both. You need a good graphics card and a good processor, and that's what I often tell people is you can't have one or the other. You really got to have both uh, to run X-Plane well. So hopefully these numbers kind of um, provide some amount of clarity. They might also provide a little bit of confusion as well, but the numbers are the numbers and the numbers don't lie.